Why are you out here alone? No one cares where I go. They know I can't leave the island. It's nicer out here than inside, anyway. Your parents know where you are? They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured. And maybe they're waiting for me back at home. It doesn't say for you here. Your ship was attacked by Voidwalking. Void Not far, for sure. But you didn't die. You don't seem scared. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. I would only survive by the skin of my teeth. You should go somewhere safer, though. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. Void Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. I think these bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. Drowned and eaten by a void woken. I wonder in which order. You spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red color. Could he be...? Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. Hey, I'm glad you survived the ship, right? The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hole. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. I'm glad to help. Does it just stand idly by people in danger? Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Now then, if there's nothing further... What are you doing here, standing on the right? I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident I was gazing out over the waves. He sighs dramatically. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? 
last night, cracking infested wasteland you never want to go near again? Touche. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tranquil moments pass as the waves lap against your thoughts. As for myself, when I consider this vast expanse before us, I see an empire. I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. Eh, people say they see castles in the sky, might as well see them in the sea. Yes, but these weren't castles in the sky, were they? Quite obviously, I was musing over the very actual empire that I lost. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended, he stares at you with utter incredulity. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? You're the notorious Red Prince. The very same. I am the Red Prince. The All-Conqueror. The World Tamer. The Spouse of the Sun. Of course you know me. There's a brief moment's pause, during which his grandiloquent pose deflates ever so slightly. That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world-taming opportunities at the moment. The grandeur that is my fate has uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Hey, man, you can come along if you want. This and that. Tag along. Do you really mean to compare the fate of an empire to whatever foibles you seek to fix? On the other hand, I really could do with a dog's body. And you've already proven to be trustworthy enough. You came back for the others on that ship, after all. Fine, I accept. On one condition. For reasons I'll not disclose right now, it is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer, one of the mystics of my kind. I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll extend you the blessing of my company. I can't promise that, but I, I can keep it in mind. You do tend to beat around the bush, don't you? Oh well, that wishy-washy answer will have to do then. So, now that that's settled, first things first. Even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic and, yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory or death. The Red Prince nods and gives you a smile that wavers ever so delicately between courtesy and contempt. Now, as you're aware, you'll be traveling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! Some would see this as an omen. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, 
but it stares at you with acute intensity. Its eyes clear, and it shakes its head, confused. I'm confused too. Yes, by all means, let us partake in the art of conversation. here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them ringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me. I never want to set foot on a stuffy old boat ever again. Never. It appears that uh, the other survivors might have taken what they needed. Magister, now speak. I am a proud loyal to thee. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her dagger to its root. Her eyes squeeze shut. Drops of blood form against the dagger's edge and quickly fall to the ground. She groans. Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop, and your friend these many years. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, then you will help the Void destroy it. Dallas? Yes, Your Holiness? I believe we're done here. What a waste. Come, we'll be needed elsewhere. Where is he?
single name throbs across your brain. Verdas, Verdas, Verdas. He must escape. He cannot die here. He cannot. I've spotted something. I wonder where this leads. You walk up to a skeleton unlike any you have ever seen before. His skull seems to be carved into intricate patterns with a gemstone sitting in the middle of his forehead. Approaching, you hear a profane rumble from the undead beast. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps? Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation! That stuck fast. I wonder, um, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Uh, what are you doing? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't! Actually, you don't seem half as threatening as those creatures in red. Run along, won't you? I have business to attend to. What's your business with that body? Why, it's face, of course. What other use would I have for some rotting corpse? A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately but viciously rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Carved? Please. You hardly think I am one of your breed, do you? You have never seen anything like it because you have never met anyone like me. Simply put, I am an Eternal, and you are not. You have my sympathies. Indeed, no one seems to have the good taste to be. My people are rather... absent. At least from this realm. As for the others... well... There is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. You work out with both of us. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in... Well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality. But being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, 
Which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I prefer that you remain a wizard, my friend. I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off. Poison. How do I use a clear poison? Wait, uh, you go back up top. No, 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 no. I'm gonna walk around it, that's why. Does it let me know that he can do that? <clears throat> Undead lets you heal from poison, but regular healing will damage you. Oh, man. I can't put the fires out.
you go with us? Who are you? Are you from the shelter? She says nothing of another. Fear alas! She is so late! Might be able to help if you explain your story. A Magister offers to help us flee, Atusa. She says there are many Magisters who do not agree with the Bishop. She says they bring us to safety. But Atusa is overdue. She promises to come at noon. We are afraid to stay, afraid to leave. Yeah, uh, about Atusa. She's been killed, she's blown up. I see. I see. We hope for nothing then. We wait for nothing. I like to be alone now. Oh, sorry about that, baby.